Hey people, Banggood were kind enough to send me one of these to review. It's the XK4 aluminium pocket hole jig from Enjoywood. Now as usual, Banggood said I could say whatever I liked about this, uh, which is one of the reasons I really do love working with Banggood. They have a fair bit of integrity. Uh, plus, they sell things with the absolute best names. Enjoy wood. Ah, brilliant. Uh, so pocket hole joinery. It's a dirty word to some woodworker snobs. Used in the right places though, it can be a quick and easy joinery technique that makes some really strong joints. It's a relatively cheap system to use and it's easy to use, so ideal for the beginner woodworker, but it does have its place in the more experienced woodworker's arsenal too. So let's get straight into it and see what's in the box. Instructions, pretty important, but I cover the basics on how to use pocket holes in this video. That looks like the drill and bits. We'll take a look at that in a second. Looks like we've got a few screws to get you started. That's pretty handy. And this seems to be another small portable base. Again, we'll check that out in a moment. And here it is. This is what we've been waiting for, the jig itself. The jig is up. Let's all do a jig. Let's get jiggy with it. I'll stop now. Well, this is nice. It's solid aluminium for the most part, which is great as my other pocket hole jig is just plastic. Uh, it seems pretty well made and well marked, but we'll check this out properly later. Now, the screws they give you, uh, they give you a few to get going, and this is great, but if you're gonna be serious about a project, you're gonna need to buy lots more, and also, of course, buy the sizes that you need. Using it is an absolute doddle. However, before you do anything else, it's recommended that you secure the jig to the workbench. Now you can use a clamp at the back, or you can use the pre-drilled screw holes that come with it uh, to go straight into your workbench. Now I found the ideal way is to use a piece of scrap wood and make a jig for your jig, if that makes sense. Uh, so you can use two clamps to clamp it down either side, and plus you can get a bit of support either side of the jig if you're doing those wider pieces, uh, slightly wider than the jig base. The drill has an adjustable stop collar and that can be adjusted on the side of the jig. Just use the supplied hex key to do this. It needs to be set to the shoulder of the screw, and that's that little stepped part, matches the material thickness you're drilling into. Then you also set the thickness of the wood you're drilling on the drill guide. And this just has two little brass nuts either side to unscrew and tighten back up when you've got it set. The wood then goes into the other side of the clamp and the clamp is adjusted so that it will clamp the wood securely in place. You can then clamp the wood down and drill the holes using the guides. Now there's three hole positions. You have a few options depending on what width of wood you're using. And there we go, holes. You have to use pocket hole screws at this point. Those are self-tapping screws with a flat shoulder rather than a countersunk shoulder, as this will pull the wood straight up against where it needs to go. You can get away with others, but you do add the risk of the wood not fitting straight and also splitting the wood. Plus, you need to make sure that you use the proper length of screws for the thickness of the wood that you're using. Screws are pretty cheap though, and can be found in most hardware stores, plus Mangood sell them as well. Once you have your holes, just pop the work pieces together and use the supplied number two square bit to drive in those screws. Now I say drive as you really should be using the driver setting on your drill rather than the drill setting, just to ensure that you don't power too much down and risk splitting the wood. Now, if you have one, a face clamp is really helpful to keep the wood in place properly, but at a pinch, a regular clamp works too. So, the small portable base allows you to make holes in situ rather than using the main jig on your workbench. Now, if you're anything like me, you'll often forget to do some holes, and this thing can be a lifesaver. Just unscrew each side, slide it out, and then slide it into the portable base, which can be held against your work by hand or preferably with a clamp. Nice then drill your holes as normal, and then punish yourself for not doing it for properly in the first place. <coughs> I've been using pocket hole joinery since I started woodworking, but I've been using the Craig K4 system, which probably cost me about £100 at the time. It's now discontinued, but still, it's a very similar design and perhaps a good design to compare with. So, which one will win the fight to stay in my workshop?
First of all, there's the clamp on the Enjoy Wood jig. It's got a finer screw pitch, which honestly isn't a good thing when you're clamping wood. There's no need for that sort of accuracy. However, it does have a rubber grip that's actually good. The Craig one is just rubber, and this one has a proper nice grip that's not going anywhere. The Craig jig does have this nice indent on the base uh, for setting the stop collar. This is a nice to have feature, but it really doesn't take that much effort just to set it from the edge of the jig. Markings on the Craig and many of the others that I've noticed out there as well are just in metric or in imperial, depending on which one you get. The Enjoy Wood jig has both metric and imperial. Handy. The hole spacing on the Enjoy Wood jig is also a lot more useful. I mean, what does A, B and C mean without consulting the instructions? Who knows? Uh, the Enjoy Wood jig has some useful measurements, you can see there. The Craig jig came with a complete set of everything you need, including a single separate hole guide uh, and a face clamp. This is something I would want, but you can of course buy these separately of course and use regular clamps. The difference that impresses me the most though is the fact that the Enjoy Wood jig is solid aluminium parts while the Craig is plastic. Now, it's not happened yet, I'm sure the plastic is tough, but I can see this Craig one shattering on my workshop floor one day. So you've seen the unit close up, let's make something simple. How about a portable base for my new table saw? I'm just making a simple wooden frame here with some two by fours. I've cut the pieces I need already. And I've marked up where I want my pocket holes to go. You know what this needs? Yeah, that's right. This needs a completely out of context, out of the blue 80s montage for no reason. if you want also use some extra strong glue uh, to get these joints even stronger but honestly one of the main reasons I use pocket holes is so I can take the thing apart later and perhaps reuse the wood for something else so I'm not gonna use the glue and there we go just needs a bit of a tabletop I'll pop a sheet of plywood on here and put some fixings in place to keep it secure and there we go, a simple tool trolley made with pocket holes. It's strong enough for now and I can take it apart later or modify it if I need to. As well as some fancy joinery on the legs, my heavy duty workbench also uses pocket holes. Pocket holes! And that was invaluable when I had to move my workshop a few years ago. The worktop just popped off and then popped back on again the other end. And I have no fears about this thing ever collapsing. It's fairly sturdy. So in summary, would I buy one of these if I didn't have a pocket hole jig? Well, as I had the Craig system already, no. Uh, but if I didn't have a pocket hole system, then most definitely, yes, it's sturdy. I could drop this thing and it wouldn't break and it's probably going to last. Uh, there are a few things I'd also have to buy. It doesn't come with a face clamp, for example, and that's pretty vital. Uh, it would have been nice to get one with it, but you can buy those on Banggood as well as the screws, screw covers and any other accessories that you might want. Um, there's also a few little features, as I said, that's a shame it doesn't have, like the little indents for setting this drill stop collar, but honestly, these are not a problem. They're just nice to have. It's cheap too, but if you buy it on the discount code that I give in the video description below, you get $30 off, bringing it down to $69.99 sometimes. Uh, that won't leave a hole in your pocket. Pause for laughs. One, two, three. With that in mind, I'm going to give this jig four out of five logs. And if you haven't got a pocket hole jig system, it's definitely a great way of starting out. So, you want to learn more about pocket holes, do you? Well, check out the video just there and become a pocket hole master. It's probably someone else's video at the moment because I haven't made a really good guide to pocket holes yet. But when I do, I'll replace it with my one because obviously I want you to go and watch my video. There you go. Watch, watch, watch that one for now. Hmm.